If you're anything like Ted or I, you're a keyboard nerd, which means you want to know the latest, greatest, coolest, neatest keyboard on the market. Today, Ted and I are listing our favorites for 2021, our favorite keyboards. Here's the definitive list, best keyboards under $2,000. Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Well, Ted, this is Texas, the great open carry state. So which keyboard would you open carry to the gigs? I already have one picked. I, already, I don't want to name one right off, but yeah, open carry is going to start here right at the end of the month, and so then you can get We're a, talking a keyboards light. only here today. <laughs> get a lightweight keyboard to go with you wherever you go. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, I didn't prep him for that one, but in all seriousness, we are here talking our favorite keyboards of 2021. What are you going to carry with you? This is uh, the no stands allowed is what this is. Okay. This is like stage piano yeah so so no in-home digitals like the one behind us okay. but we're looking at our favorites under two thousand dollars things that people should consider seriously if they're in that price range and they're looking for a great we've done videos on on some of these i think we're going to link we're going to link videos to these these ones because they are ones that are near and dear to our heart oh that'd be great um yeah. and i think you wanted to start with your favorite i want to start with that little red casio tone because oh. it's, hey that's a, it's that, great you, but then I read it wrong. It was not under 200. It was under 2,000. Yes. But that it's still under 2,000 if it, it's under it 200. It is. The Casio, uh, the Casio tone. It was like the reemergence of a great 1980s. Um, re re kind of just like a toy, but it, it's it's an accessory to anybody's. But it's got a great piano and a, and a road sound in it, and it's loud. It's so you can take it to the pool to beach. That's what. Yeah, the, the, battery powered if you want it to be. Just a really cool instrument. Um, that's kind of a, a, just a fun one that we wanted to It is a throw. fun one. Um, but I know you really enjoyed one of the ones that we had just recently shot. It was a Roland. The Roland RD88. Yeah. I love that thing. Had those tiny little speakers in it, just kind of for monitors. Mm -hmm. But the more ease, of a stage instrument. More of a stage instrument. Just it, it would be great fun to go to a gig and have that thing, whether you get to play and sing or just play and back up other people. It's just a, a fun fun keyboard and you can you can layer your own sound so you can go in and layer uh and create your own sound so it's really cool because you you start going through the sounds and you're like this is like the let off noise for well, like an electric piano yeah but you know it played great it sounded great um and it was super light i think it may be the lightest of all the ones that mm -hmm. that, that we looked not a at. big speaker system on it but really it's not designed for anything more than in home yeah, reference you're not carrying or around magnets you know big old mm -hmm. magnets it's just a small effective monitors you can hear it there and, pl and plug it in it had great connections in the back mm -hmm. yeah really just ready for the stage ready for the studio Really cool electric pianos, really good piano sounds. The action was great on it. Um, but yeah, the RD88, which is, uh, I think it had just come out second half of 2020. So we kind of included it here on this list because we're in 2021. There was Still some product, re yeah. product releases, but, but these are kind of like in the last 18 months. Uh, really enjoyed the RD88. Um, one of my favorites is the, the relaunch of the ES series from Kawhi. Kawhi. The 520 and the 920, particularly the 920, I really, really enjoy that instrument. Um, but lightweight, great sound, um, really cool feature set on there. We've done some videos comparing it to um, other other instruments around the same price point, um, other uh, just other pianos in that price point, other feature rich heavy um, instruments. Well, it has a sleek look to it too. It's it's sleek. You have the four band EQ, which I really enjoy. So you can kind of just make each piano a little bit more bright if you wanted right to, a little darker, fly. and you have it on the on the go. Um, really cool presets on there. Um, and really it's just easy to operate, great feel, fills up the room, a good speaker system on that one. I would like kind of the opposite of the RD88. It's kind of right. rich in the speech, speaker system, um, but can be taken easily to a gig, played. Um, I really enjoy the action on that. I think of all the ones we're looking at today, the ES920 might have the best action. Is that the one that had the wooden keys in it? It doesn't have wood keys, but it's, it's their highest, weighted, their, their highest, the highest grade that isn't wooden. So. Um, just yeah just an incredible feeling instrument um and uh yeah it's a pretty cool one uh, but the 520 and the 920 are kind of in that price range we definitely recommend checking those ones out 
Um, I think switching back to Roland, there was a couple cool releases with the FPX series. Um, so a continuation of their FP30s and 60s. Um, the FP30X has been very popular. It, it incorporates Bluetooth audio, right. which is something you don't normally see under $1,000. But that, that keyboard, I think, comes in around $750, um, and you get Bluetooth audio, which is right. cool. So it turns into a speaker system right. in your house. Um, the FP60X is also great. We've had a hard time even getting that in stock. Um, but the FPX relaunch is, is a great sounding, feeling instrument. Definitely goes on our list. Yeah. The other one I liked that was uh, was that Yamaha 515. The P515. The P515. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that keyboard I liked a lot, but I thought it was I think it might be one of the heavier ones in 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 because I'm thinking in terms of like pick it up, throw it in the car, go to gig. It's yeah, it's a little heavier. It has the wood keys. Um, it also is uh, um, a little bit older. Um, it's it's definitely still competes in that price range, um, and uh, so it's definitely something you should check out. Wood keys, their highest level. P series from Yamaha, um, but yeah, the P515. Um, we've actually done a video that one versus the ES920. So definitely check out that video because um, a lot of people will, will say, "Hey, you know, the Yamaha's better or the Quai's better," and it, it really comes down to the sample and the action. Right. Um, and there's opinions on both sides. Um, but yeah, the P515. If you're in this price range, it's definitely one you have to look at. I would say that's probably the one that's going to get replaced the soonest. Very comfortable to play, though. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, I know there's the one with the wooden keys that was comfortable to play. Yeah. Um, that I liked a lot. I, I mean, vaguely remember shooting the video. Yeah. <laughs> um, going back to like stage instruments, I would I would recommend looking at the Kawhi MP7 SE, and so that's their second edition of the MP7 line. Um, a, a little bit less, a lot less than the MP11, um, but it, it falls in this price range. Doesn't have onboard speakers, so that if that's something you're looking for, this probably wouldn't check that box. But it's like the pure stage piano in this group. Mm -hmm. And so that one has wood keys from Kawhi. So that's um, kind of the opposite side of the ES. The ES920 and 520 are gonna have the speakers, a little bit more feature rich on recording and on, uh, I think there's a mic input. There's, you know, it's a, it's a little bit more intuitive, I would say. Um, the stage piano is more of a professional, the MP7 SC. That I liked a lot if I were going to a gig where I did not have to sing and just back up like a jazz mm -hmm. gig or something, because that's a great, great, that feels like a piano. Yeah, and, and so it's a little bit heavier. And sorry, I, I do want to clarify, the MP7 doesn't have the wood keys. The MP11 has okay. the wood keys. I know one of them did. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the MP7 has the organ sounds and uh, and just just feels great, sounds excellent, and the layout is is... Um, a different design than on the MP11, and some people I've I've noticed really like um, the layout with the the individual um, uh, the knobs that you can turn in the mixer. Right. It just it makes a little bit more sense, um, and so just a, a great a great instrument. Um, there is one that I I don't think we've done a video on, but I really do enjoy it from Yamaha, the CP73, um, kind of in that same. Uh, that same vein of a stage piano, and I think we are we, we just unboxed one, and I, I was messing around with it. It's They're pretty really cool, cool. Um, really, because it has the separate sections. It's almost laid out like an old synth. Mm -hmm. It's got you know the, each. Section. You can flip on the piano, the the electric, the electric pianos, or the organs, or the organs. Um, and so that is one that kind of makes our our list as well. And it's got seventy three keys. It's like the original keyboards, a lot of them from the 70s, 73 key they mm -hmm. from like E to E, I think, or something. Yeah, like so so uh, I think there's there's one more that we wanted to put on our list. And so we've talked about the RD88, we've talked about the Kawhi ES series, the 920 um, and the 520. We've talked about the P515, uh, we talked about the MP7 SE, um, the FPX series from Roland, the 30 and the 60. Right. Um, and then I did just mention the CP73, but I think there's one that we really enjoyed, and we weren't, we were really surprised that how many features are in this, um, the DGX. Oh yeah, the, the DGX, DGX 670. 70, I forgot about it. that. Was a thrilling keyboard mm -hmm. because they put that new sample of the CFX in there, and I like the way they rounded the, the corner and they, they took the stand away. They so took it, the stand it makes away, our so list. they beefed it up a little bit, and you know? and it didn't go up in price. I don't think. I think it's right around the same price. It is. Um, they make it made a color screen. Um, they made just a little bit more like their Clavinova line. Um, speaker power again isn't all that loud and, and present, but it's at the great end of the for a monitor it, 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 it is, it is, and so it really has some cool features. So if you haven't seen that video, please check it out. 
the only thing about including that with these others as a stage piano is that it, it doesn't have, quote unquote, a proper left and right output. Mm -hmm. It has the headphone output. You have to go in and change it to line out. But you can leave the speakers on, but just so that speak the sound, the signal mm -hmm. that goes out it's kind of doesn't ha is not coming from stereo. their amplifier. Mm -hmm. It's coming from just the line outs, yeah. which makes it good to go to a PA. But the 670 also f is the only one out of all these keyboards that, that we've mentioned that actually has built-in rhythm patterns and, and recording sections. And I all. Think it's, well, they all have the capability, but to just get it out front, like from a little kid on up, it's self-explanatory. I mm -hmm. mean, it's laid out. It's almost like a mini clavinova. Yeah, it's, it's very learner intuitive. It, it is. Um, and so, yeah, so it's really kind of just a list of keyboards. I know we, we've, we leaned heavy on the stage presence of these things, but, um, but that, you know, it's, it's capable to do the things. It might not be the best utility for stage, right. but as far as keyboard ready to take with you, I think it'd be a, gr a great yeah. instrument. Uh, but that's our list for 2021. Really some cool releases, um, some great instruments. And uh, we've done, I think, product reviews on most of those instruments. And we'll link those um, just to make sure. I think we'll have them all in the description, but hopefully get them linked through, through to the video. Uh, but just incredible products, incredible releases. Definitely check them out if you are in the price range of somewhere under $2,000 looking for the best bang for your buck. Oh, lots of fun, too. Every one of them is, is, is fun keyboard to play. Yeah, so we hope to see you in Texas open carrying those on your shoulder. And uh, it'll be fun. But thank you guys for watching. This is Ted. I'm Patrick. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. See us on AlamoMusic.com. If you think we missed one and there's a better keyboard for the price, please leave it in the description. We'd love to know what it is. We'd love to review it. We'd love to take a look and prove that you're wrong. I mean, <laughs> prove that you're right. And we appreciate your, your commitment to commenting on our video. Thank you guys for watching.